Hi guys and welcome to my tutorial. My name is Angeline Knott and I am the creator and um, owner behind Forget Me Not Designs. Um, I had some people request a tutorial on how I achieve my watercolor marble effect so I decided to get myself a tripod and try out filming. So I'm nervous this is my first time doing this but um, I'm excited to show you guys how I achieved that look. I'm going to be doing today's video um, with a temporary tattoo and alcohol inks and I'm really excited to show you. So I'm gonna get started and I'm gonna try and link below the products that I use and if you have any questions let me know. I'm happy to um, help and pass on my knowledge and my techniques. I found that there wasn't a lot of videos um, with this style of cup um, out there so I thought it was my turn to give back to the community and the tumblr world on um helping you guys learn and showing you guys how i create my look so thanks so much for watching and let's get started watercolor ink methods um, to see the marble effect. Uh, I just realized I don't have my gold here so I'm gonna have to run out and get it before I get too started but in the meantime um, so I'm gonna do it with a tattoo so sort of like the uh, tiger one that I've done in the past so I have a 20 ounce this is a slurp style um, pr sanded primed uh, white, just plain old white um, Rust-Oleum 3X, 2X, whatever. You guys know what I mean. The usual good stuff. I have my inks. So I have mainly for these some Bray Reese. I really like the Bray Reese ones. And Pinata. So I kind of just grabbed what I think matches the colors of my tattoo deco. And I'm going to pair those with the deco. So I'm gonna, and then I have my just isopropyl alcohol from the drugstore and a few little dishes and my watercolor brushes. So these ones I just got off Amazon. Um, they're just like all different, all different sizes sort of. I hope you guys can see this okay. And I have some paper towel for blotting. And so I've gone ahead and cut down my tattoo. So I'm gonna include this part of it anyway. I know you guys know how to put a tattoo deco on, but anyway. So I've gone ahead and trimmed down the sides of my deco. I'm going to apply it. So what I'm doing now is just checking to make sure that it's not over either side. I'm not in frame. So that it fits along the bottom and along the top. I have a wet rag here. Not sopping wet, just down. And I'm gonna go ahead and peel the film off of it sort of line it up the best you can once you they're very sticky so once you put it down like you're committed so put your wet rag over top and just sort of press it down I'm trying to saturate the paper but like I said you don't want it sopping wet so I just press it and then what I do as I go along and I sort of smooth out if there's any like air bubbles or wrinkles this one transferred pretty nicely it looks like if you see like some wet white spots still on your paper that means it didn't get wet yet so the tattoo that I'm using is from pressing images from Robin it's the peacock one my sister um, requested a new cup and um, this is the tattoo that she picked out of my stash. So she's been waiting for a while for this cup, but I told her she had to wait until my <laughs> phone tripod came in so I could film myself doing the watercolor. <laughs> okay, so that's looking like it's pretty much on there. Maybe a couple wrinkles. So I'm gonna just test. So I'll peel up a corner and just check it. go. So it transferred really well. So now I'm going to go ahead and let this dry for a bit. 
There's a couple bubbles. I'm just going to very lightly. You don't want to rip your tattoo or like smear the color or anything. Okay, so it's looking really pretty. I love that this is a really pretty tattoo. So I'm going to go ahead and, and run out to my shed and grab my gold um, metallic alcohol ink pigment so I can show you guys the next step, which is after it dries, I'm going to um, do the watercolor inks around it. So I'll be back. Okay, guys, I'm back. I hope that this is okay. I'm sitting in front of my window and that's probably not the best idea because I can see that it's kind of like blurry over here, but hopefully you'll be able to see it okay. So I've gone ahead and let my tattoo dry. My cup is dry now. I left it for a couple of hours. Um, I've gone ahead and poured out some of my clean alcohol into the, a little dish. It's just a recycled plastic dish from one of my son's snacks. Um, I've gone ahead and cleaned while well, my brushes are ready to go. This one is the number four of the set that I have. So you can kind of see how it's pretty thin and fine. Um, I've grabbed one other color. It's a, a lighter pink. And then I've grabbed my rich gold pinata metallic gold. So if you guys have seen my, my ink work, then you'll know that I always marble in my gold with Amy's All That Glitters is Gold um, from m and Glitter Factory uh, Chunky Mix along my veins. So I will show that in the epoxy part of my tutorial, um, but I can hardly call it a tutorial. But uh, we'll go ahead and get started with our inks. So I just usually open them all up, which isn't always the easiest because I use these a lot so the lids get sticky. Which reminds me, I need to order some soon. So all of these, like I said, are either Bray Reese or Pinata. I can, I'll tell you guys what colors I'm using as I get to the stages here. I'm not sure if I'll use all of these. I usually just kind of pull out, like I said, whatever I think matches the deco that I'm doing. And then go from there. As they blend, you'll kind of see what you like the look of or what you don't like the look of. So I'm going to do another little cup of alcohol ink. I'll have one for my blues and green and one for my pinks and purples. So you'll kind of see that as you work with them, your brush will get dirty. And when you're cleaning your brush or getting, grabbing some alcohol ink to help with the movement and the flow of the inks, um, you don't really want cross contamination. So I think I said that this is my clean brush here. I am dirtying my ink already. Okay, I'm gonna put my other brushes aside so I don't grab one. And I'm just gonna pick a spot to start and a color to start with. So up here, I've got like some teal and blue tones in my, I don't know if you guys can see this very good. I might have to bring it down further. Oh, I don't know how this is gonna work. Okay, so I've got some blue tones. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start off with um, this turquoise color because I think it kind of matches. So what I do is I go ahead and just put a drop on. I grab some ink or some, sorry, alcohol on my brush and I just start to dab it and sort of, you have to turn your cup as you're working. Hopefully you guys can see this. I'll turn myself here. Turn your cup as you're working. It kind of gets tricky on the curves, just where you want. You kind of let the ink do what it wants and blend it out. Grab some more alcohol and it'll get lighter towards the edge and darker. You want more of your color. Um, in one spot and that's where you're going to create your vein and then as you add alcohol ink it's going to sort of blend out the color towards the edges and you just want to like keep grabbing the thing about this what's really nice is if you don't like the way it looks alcohol is like an eraser with alcohol ink so you just grab a paper towel with some ink on it or some sorry some alcohol on it and you can wipe away the ink or just keep as you add ink to a spot it's gonna create like a little bubble like that if you guys can see if you want more color go ahead and grab another drop of ink if you like the way it looks leave it as is so I like the way that looks so now I'm gonna go in with some green so this is Kelly green from Bray Reese and I'm going to, you kind of want to put light colors beside themselves. So sometimes I kind of 
blow on the ink to make it do what I want. So the same color families you're gonna want next to each other so they're not making like a brown soupy color. <laughs> this green is a bit tricky. So this here, you can see it rolled across my decal and I don't really want that to happen. So there, I'm just ruining this part. Maybe we can go back in without ink. Oh, I keep saying ink, <laughs> alcohol. Can you tell I'm nervous? And rework that spot, it's not a big deal. Again, it's rolling onto my decal, so just dab at it with a piece of paper towel. And like I said, alcohol is like an eraser when you're working with inks. So in a couple of spots, I'm going to blend the colors together. And this spot here kind of got away on me, made a drip, and you just go in and blend that out. I'm just blowing on it. There we go. So now you can see I have blue, I have green. Um, next, I think I'm gonna go in with um, sky blue. And I'm gonna do a little piece here. So what I like to do with my inks, and sometimes it's not always the case, is to create some different directions. So these two are kind of going horizontally. This one I wanna go on in on a vertical slant. Vertical, is that the right word? Up and down. <laughs> so again, it's I'm just gonna lightly dab that off where it ran onto my image, my tattoo. You could seal your tattoo before you do this if you want to. Um, quick coat would be really good for that, or just a spray seal, but I don't do that. Because I'm pretty careful around my tattoo. Okay, so I kind of like the way this is looking. So now what I'm gonna do, if you can see, like it's really, colors are really pretty. So I went from a blue tone and it starts to go into the pinks and purples. So what I'm gonna do is gonna follow that colorway. I'm gonna hit it with, I think I'm gonna use my lighter ink. So I had some pinata colors picked out and I don't think I'm gonna end up using them. So I'm gonna go in with my blush, Bray Reese. And I'm gonna angle it the other way. So I'm gonna switch color, um, switch cups for my di di dipping my brush now because I'm going into a different colorway. So my greens and blues, I'm gonna stay in the other one and this one I'm gonna work off of a new cup of, you can use the same brush, it's no problem. So this one kind of spread into my blue and it's giving me a nice purple look. So I'm gonna work with that, just work it in. So this one was very faint, I'm gonna add some more ink. So you can add as much or as little ink as you want. I try and just use small amounts because I really like like the watercolory look to it. And I'm gonna blow on this to sort of fan it out a bit across the cup. And again, like you just kind of gotta keep cleaning your cup where you're, um, ink rolls onto the image, which isn't a big deal. If you're fast enough and turn your cup as the ink is flowing, and then you're probably more prepared than me. Okay, so I kind of like the way that is looking. So now I'm gonna go in with some purple. I'm gonna try and keep this one like on a slant and just fill in this little corner here that I picked. And the blue and the pink mix up here to create purple. So it's gonna blend, it's gonna look really pretty. So here along the edge where the ink is meeting the deco, you wanna kinda blend that softly. I'm gonna come back in later and show you guys how I do that. So again, I'm trying to create like darker veins along the edge you guys can see here. So this is where I'm going to highlight with my gold and add in my glitter in the end when I'm doing the marble part. Okay, so again, I'm gonna, now I'm gonna go back into the blues. So I'm gonna start with sky blue because it's my lightest blue. And 
them back to my uh, other cup of alcohol, the greeny blue one. And you can see sort of how it's mixing in and making like a bluey purple. So I'm gonna leave that, blow on it. And then I'm going to go to turquoise. I'm gonna start trying to add in greens again. You can pretty much put, like I said, whatever colors you want and whatever pattern you want. I don't really have any rhyme or reason. Just try and keep my light colors near each other. So like I said, so they blend and do what you want and not make a huge soupy mess. So I like this dark vein here, so I'm just going to drag it down a bit so it doesn't flow onto my deco. So hopefully you guys can see this okay. I'm going to go in again with my um, Kelly Green. I don't, I'm not crazy about this green, so I don't want to put a ton of it. So I'm just going to, I think, use it this once more. Oh, that got away from me. That's okay, we'll blend it in. See, that's what I mean. You gotta kind of be quick. <laughs> when you're working on a curved surface, it gets tricky. So I'm just gonna blend that. Keep cleaning off my runs. Okay, I kind of like the way that went back into a turquoise color. And I'm gonna go Back to my light blue, my sky blue. This one's a very light color, so I don't need a ton of ink to calm it down. Because <laughs> it'll just kind of go white on my cup in the more open areas. Like that, it kind of goes white because it's not a very dark color. So. I don't like I don't really want that so I'm gonna go back in with my blue again okay so I'm liking it so far now I'm gonna go back to purple and I'm gonna let this one run down to the front of the deco and back to my other cup of a ink, or sorry, alcohol, I keep saying ink. So the way this created the, this, the way this one ran created a very nice like natural vein. So I'm gonna try and just work lightly around, I don't want it to run that far, lightly around that sort of split that it made on its own when it was running around the cup. So I can use this as a vein for my pigment, my gold. Not pigment, glitter. I'm just sort of, this one's gonna run on me. <laughs> so if it starts to dry before you can um, wipe it off and you don't wanna scratch your, you gotta be careful around your tattoo, you don't wanna scratch it because I did not seal it. So you can just take a little piece of paper towel with some clean ink on it and just sort of clean it off but you don't want to rub too hard because then you're gonna rub off the color of your tattoo and we don't want that so I'm gonna start blending my peacock into the inks now so I think I'm going to just fix these spots because they started to so when it starts to dry then it doesn't flow anymore you can just go back in with some clean um, alcohol and rework that spot. The nice thing about inks and alcohol is that um, you, if you don't like a spot you can just go back over it. If you want to change the color or the shape or the movement that you're seeing like you can just go back over it. It's very easy to change. It's not super permanent. So I also I'm always sort of like blotting and stuff. That's why I like to have the paper towel here. Um, next, I said pink again, 
So this is where I'm gonna try and drop it over the bottom of the cup. I don't know if you guys can see that. So I'm gonna drip it over the bottom of my cup now. And see what we can make. This is sort of like a really nice bright pink. And I'm just gonna work along this edge. I'm gonna go back in with more color after. So I'm gonna need some more color here. Dry my cup stuck on my hair. <laughs> So this is kind of like the sky blue, it's like very light, so it'll create like white spots. If you ink, uh, put too much alcohol, it'll really rip, um, get quite light in places, so I like to go over with a little more color. Oh, I'm spilling my, my alcohol. So the bottom of the cup can be kind of tricky um, with inks. It's almost best to tape them off because it's hard to get a, a nice thick epoxy coat over the edge to um, really protect your edge. Um, I will coat a uh, watercolor tumbler at least four times to try and build up the epoxy on the rims if I'm not um, taping them off. Okay. I'm just gonna finish off my bottom in pink, I guess. I kinda just go with the, f the whole thing about inks is the go with the flow. If it's not looking how you like it, just keep working it and you'll eventually like get it to a spot where hopefully you like the way it starts looking. So, so far you guys can see. So I'm, I'm liking the way it looks. So here we had a bit of a run that I didn't catch so I'm just gonna really carefully in a circular motion so you can see where it starts to take the color of the tattoo off right here so you have to be careful we can kind of blend that and then make it look more natural okay so now what I do after I've got like my base done um, I'm gonna go back in and spots where I would like more color, I'll go ahead and add more ink and kind of rework it. You can go in different directions. So this one I'm gonna try and create a little more rather than the back and forth look, um, which depends what kind of what you wanna go for. If you want the back and forth look, then leave it. If you wanna add a little more um, shape to it, go ahead and go back over it. Like I said, once you put ink down, you can do whatever you want with it. So I want to make some spots darker. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Now my wedding ring is scratching inside of the cup, making an awful noise. Okay, so I like the way that is looking. So I'm gonna go in with my Kelly again and just brighten up. Brighten up the Kelly spots. My, so I didn't clean my brush in between, so it still has some of that um, turquoise color on it. So it's gonna blend a bit, which I like the way it looks when it blends. get sort of a darker green in some spots and again it went over onto my so I'm very lightly because I don't want to ruin my deco I'm 
Okay, so that one, I'm just gonna blow on it. There we go. So next I had sky, so I'm gonna try and bring the sky down a bit here. And blend it into the pinks and blues. So I'm going to switch back to my pinks and blues cup of alcohol. So this I'm gonna blend to a bit purple to try and create a bit of a different shape here. And then I'm gonna go back in with my pink and just sort of slant my cup and let that ink run. Try to catch it before it goes over my deco. So it's gonna go kind of purpley here, which I think is pretty. This spot, I'm gonna blend it purpley. Okay, I'm liking it. Uh, I kind of like this, so I'm not gonna mess with it. <laughs> I'm gonna add some more purple here. And I'm gonna, again, slant my cup to try and bring this down into the pink and make a bit of a natural vein there. And I'm just blowing on it to try and dry the inks so they don't run any further than I want them to. Okay, I'm liking it. This little bubble here I'm not sure about, so I'm just going to blend that out. And I'm going to add some more pink right there because, it's like I said, you can kind of see the white paint showing through from the primer. So I'll just let that become a natural vein and blow. There. So I'm going to put this aside and let it dry. No, I let it have to, <laughs> have to add my gold. So I'm going to grab my gold, give it a good shake. I hope you guys can see okay. I'm not very straight here. So I use the Pinata Rich Gold. I haven't tried the other any other brands. I bought this one and this is the one I've used and it's lasted me a really long time for the amount of cups I do like this. So what I do with the gold is I go in you're going to want to make sure you have your um, alcohol nearby. This acts a lot differently than the inks will. It's not going to spread and flow like the ink because it's a lot more pigmented. It's a pigment rather than the regular ink. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and I'm going to find a vein that I like and that I want to accent. So this is the vein that I'm going to choose for this turquoise part. And I'm just going to literally run my bottle along and you can see that and then you're going to take some ink some alcohol and dab it along where you want that to go and it's gonna sort of spread out and make that really pretty little vein hopefully you guys can see that now if you love this look and you want it to keep it like that then this is what you're going to do and then you're just gonna leave it like this. I like to accent my watercolor golds with gold glitter. That's just sort of my signature. And if you copy me, I'm not gonna be mad because I'm showing you how I do it. So I'm gonna pick another vein, just go along it. And you just kind of work that gold pigment 
and it just it just gets so beautiful the way it spreads and it's, it's just gorgeous <laughs> gonna put some more here you kind of just go with whatever you think feels or looks good feels good I say feels good because things are such a vibe for me <laughs> And it's just gonna do its own thing. And it's gonna be really pretty. <laughs> so I'm gonna pick this one here, this vein, and bring it down. And you gotta, don't wanna put too much ink on your brush when you're doing this because it's gonna um, sort of wash away your base um, colors and wash out what you've worked on creating so you kind of got to be you don't want to put too much but you don't but you still want some movement well I like the movement of the gold and I'm gonna blow the thing with this gold I don't know if you guys can see is when you're veining it if you blow on it it'll grab sort of where there's more color and it'll run along it and it it's really pretty so now I'm going to go in here. You can kind of create your veins wherever the heck you feel like it. I like to follow the darker pigmented spots because then it just looks a little more natural. It just, yeah, it looks really pretty. Hopefully you guys can see this is not the best angle. I'm going to have to <laughs> work on my <laughs> filming game if I'm going to do this again. So I'm just kind of blowing out that gold. I'm going to follow this purple vein that's really nice on here. I got a little off track here so I'm just gonna run my brush. So it's a little more gold than I wanted in that spot so that's okay. I'm a little heavy-handed. So I'm just blowing on it again and then here I'm gonna go along this pink edge bring it around the front and let this do its thing. Once you get a feel for the way your inks and your alcohol blend and move, then that's kind of the trick I find is that just letting them, complementing them in a way that let them go on their own. Just let them do their own thing. <laughs> Okay, so now I like the way this is looking. I'm gonna go to the front of my decal. So um, I'm gonna work around sort of the bird image where I have my purple vein here. And I'm using a very small amount here because I don't want to wreck this vein. And I'm gonna blow on it. And I'm gonna, so it's kind of a mess right here, so I'm gonna fix that. If you feel like you have too much um, alcohol on your brush, just dab it off. Like I said, you don't want a ton when you're doing this part because it's going to wash away your colors underneath. Okay, um, I'm going to go along the top of my image now. I keep saying image, my <laughs> tattoo. I'm going to blow. I'm going to go along this part. So I'm going to show you guys next how I did my, if you saw the She is Fearless, it kind of started this trend of mine of the way I like to do my watercolors. Um, it, it was the, the tiger that I did for North of 49 Auction House. You guys know I'm a vendor in that one. So I um, did this same technique. That was the first watercolor cup that I did, and I really loved making it. 
and then I kind of that's where I found my passion for inks so what I did with that cup is I went in and I added gold pigment accents to the tigers fur so what I'm gonna show you guys now is how I did that but I'm gonna do it in the feathers to give it that really gold peacock look so I'm gonna just put some straight on my paper towel some gold I want to make sure that my brush is dry so I've kind of just brushed it off here I'm gonna pick up just a slight amount of that gold I don't know if you guys can see that very good and I'm gonna go in and I'm just gonna lightly brush on I'm gonna sort of accent the eyes of those feathers and I'm just gonna go along and do that be careful not to touch your cup too much because you don't want because your ink is still fairly wet so you don't want to be ruining that and then you can just go in this is just freehand whatever you feel and I'm just gonna sort of add some like little gold hoops around the feathers here I don't know if you guys can really it's very subtle but it's very pretty so then I'm gonna just so I went back this will dry quickly this gold ink that you put here but you don't need a lot you don't want a lot for doing this so now I'm just gonna sort of flick lightly flick on some gold on these feathers like I said it's as much or as little as you want you don't have to do this part I just find it really jazzes up the tattoo it gives it like so much dimension and I like to add a little extra just follow let your brush trace over the, the direction of the feathers or the fur or whatever type of image you're working with this is a really really pretty and simple way to create a gorgeous cup out of a tattoo so I'm starting to dry up so I'm gonna just dab a little bit more a few drops and then when you first go in you're gonna get a lot on there so you just sort of just go small amounts you don't need a lot especially if you're gonna add the glitter like I do you don't want a ton of these gold brush strokes in there or else it'd be like too much but I mean it's all whatever you guys think you like best that's just what I prefer so I'm just ex accenting these feather the tail feathers here Sort of coming up along the neck of the peacock gently not a lot very subtle and then I'm gonna do a harsh gold accent in this this one here okay and and that's all I'm gonna do as I do more <laughs> Um, for the tiger, I did put gold in the eyes and I, around the eyeball of the tiger image on my tiger cup. And I thought it looked really cool. But I'm not sure if I should do that right now. But I'm going to try it. No, I think that looks really pretty. So I'm going to um, stop filming. And I'm going to turn the camera around and show you guys what we have. Hi guys so I'm back with the next part of the little tutorial here I have my cup on my turner I'm going to go ahead and apply um, a thin coat of epoxy on it and I'm gonna show you guys the technique that I use for adding my glitter accents so this is the glitter that I use on all of my watercolor marbles um, it's all that glitters is gold chunky mix from M and cat glitter factory I'm not sure if you guys can see that it's a beautiful 
um, mixed chunky glitter. So what I do is I just go ahead and take a little medicine cap and I just put a, like a little bit. You don't need a lot. That's probably too much, but we're gonna go with it. And I just put in, I take my epoxy and I put in a little bit of epoxy into that and just mix it up. And then I'm gonna set this aside. So I like it to be a little bit thicker than this, so I might actually go ahead and I add a little more glitter because it added a bit too much epoxy. Um, you want it to be sort of thick so that when you go to apply it, it doesn't run all over the place. Because when you add it, you kind of want it to stay where it is. So what I usually do is I usually go ahead and mix my, my little glitter epoxy um, mix and then I let it sit on the side for a little bit and um, I let the epoxy start to cure uh, and get warm and then it thickens up. So I'm using medium viscosity um, artist resin from Counterculture DIY. Um, that's my preferred, preferred um, epoxy. I've been using it now for, oh, I don't even know, I'd have to look for quite a while and I really, I really love it. So I'm gonna go ahead and apply my uh, epoxy. So I'm just gonna clean off my glove here to make sure I don't have any <laughs> little glitter specks because I know I always usually carry some along. <laughs> so like I said, I'm just gonna put like a thin am amount, a small amount. For your first coat, you don't need a whole lot. You don't want a whole lot. Like I said, when you're applying the, um, the glitter, you don't want too much epoxy on your cup or else you're just gonna have like a big runny mess of glitter. You kind of really want um, the control. That's why I love the medium viscosity for this because it, it starts to cure and it starts to heat up quickly and it gives you that working time, perfect amount of working time because uh, you can wait for it to get a little bit warm and then still be able to apply it if you work quickly in your <laughs> prepared so I'm just gonna go ahead and get this on make sure you get your bottom really well so I mentioned this before it's kind of tricky to make sure that you get a good coverage on um, that bottom rim of your cups especially when doing alcohol ink because it is so thin so make sure your turner is level when you're doing this just let this turn for a little bit I'm gonna grab my torch and pop any bubbles that I have I'm gonna let it sit for a little while I usually let it turn for about 10 minutes and then I'll come and torch it hit it with my torch and then we'll come back in with the glitter mix so I'm just gonna stop you guys now I'm just gonna go ahead and torch the bubbles I'll let it sit for 10 minutes torch the bubbles and then I'm gonna show you guys how I add in the glitter accents Okay, and I'm back. I've been gone about 15 minutes. I went ahead and um, popped the bubbles and let my little mixture here set up a bit. So I'm gonna just glove up again. These are really terrible quality gloves, but they're the only thing I have right now. So I'm trying to use them up. So I'm using this little, oh, you guys can't see me. It would help if you could see me. Um, this little stylus from Amazon. You can see it's well used and <laughs> pretty gross. It needs a good cleaning. Um, it at one point had a silicone tip on this side, but yeah, that's long gone. But I love these little metal dotting tools for this part because um, they work really well. They're nice and thin. So I've let this set a bit. It's not crazy thick. Could be thicker, but it's still good. It'll work. So what I'm going to do is just going to drop you guys down a bit. And what we do now is you take a little bit of the gold, this is going to be kind of tough. Um, take a little bit of the gold glitter mixture, uh, just glitter and epoxy, and you're going to find one of your veins and you're just going to dab along the vein very lightly. And then you're just going to pick up some more and do it again. So you can for sure turn your turner off and do this 
through each section as your turner is stopped. Um, I like to just leave it and just kind of go with it. So the thing that I love about this glitter mixture from Emma Cat Glitter Factory is it's multi sizes. So there's some chunky, there's some small pieces, there's some fine pieces. Like it, when you spread it out like this over the your veins, it doesn't hide that metallic sort of vein that we made with the alcohol ink. It just accents it. It's just, and you can see there's holographic in it, and it just it looks really really pretty. So that's why I choose this one, this glitter, because. Like I said, it doesn't hide those marks that we've made, those veins that we've made. It accents those veins. So you're really just putting on a very small amount. Like you don't want to gob it up, but you want to just accent that. So I'm just going to keep going in as it turns to, as it comes my way. And I don't want to put a whole lot in that middle section on the back because I'm going to be adding a decal to this cup. So I don't want to put a lot of glitter there because I'm going to be putting vinyl over top and I don't want the, the decal to be sort of lost in all the sparkly glitter. So I'm going to try and keep it sort of around the edges of where I know my decal won't be. If you're not putting a decal on, give her. If you like, you do whatever you want. That's just why I'm doing it this way. So I'm going to even add a little bit. I might stop my turner and uh, work a little bit on the peacock and I'll show you guys. So this is where sort of my deck will be. I'm just putting a very light amount of this glitter. If you like it with more, go ahead and put more. If you don't even want to put the glitter, you don't have to. This is just my, the way I like to do it. If you guys have seen my cups that I've done in, with this marbling watercolor marbling technique. I just think it really gives it that little bit of extra. And try not to like scrape at your cup because since I didn't seal my inks before I put epoxy on, like if you rub at it too much, it will sort of um, rub away the ink. You gotta be careful. Uh, I should have sealed it, but I'm not always on top of my game. Okay, so I like the way that looks so far on the back. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna turn my turner off and I'm gonna go up to my main image. Hope you guys can see me okay. So I'm gonna grab some of that and I'm going to add it into this part where we added that um, my furnace turned off you guys could probably hear me better so where we added that um, gold before earlier and I'm gonna add a little bit here so this is why I let my epoxy um, set a little bit before I go adding my glitter is because I'm pretty precise where I put it like I don't want it coming off and spreading out all over and if my epoxy is really runny then it's most likely gonna spread so the nice thing about um, medium viscosity is that it it sets up pretty quickly so it's nice to work with when you're doing like these precise things. So what I'm doing right now is just adding a little bit of gold glitter to the um, the sort of the eyes of the feathers. I like to call them eyes. I don't really know what the proper term would be. And then I'm just gonna add a little bit, some of the feathers. I like to leave, like I said, I don't wanna cover up that pretty pigment either. So I'm gonna leave that. I'm not gonna do anything with the eyes because the bird's eyes, because I think it, that it would be too much. Just a few more flicks here and there. And then I'm done with the glitter part. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn my turner back on and um, we will see, I'm gonna turn the camera so you guys can see it in a little bit more detail. And then you guys will be able to see where we're at now.
Okay, so now you guys can see how we added that glitter and how, like I said, it, it doesn't cover up your metallic veins. It just sort of accents them. So here, like, you can still see the metallic underneath that gold. But it's just like a nice little extra added pop. So I'm pretty happy with the way this looks. I'm hoping that um, when I come back out tomorrow morning, I'm just going to let this cure overnight. That... Um, it's gonna look just as pretty as it does now and uh we will move on to the deco part i'll probably do another coat of epoxy over this um tomorrow morning and then um after i do the deco and put the top coat on i'll show you guys the finished look <laughs> 